Hey, so it's Nick Harcourt, and I'm here with Taylor Goldsmith from the band Dawes. First of all, thanks for doing this. It's great to see you. Good to see you too, man. You know, I think we first met about seven or eight years ago. You did the Guitar Center Sessions TV show that I used to host. Yeah, yeah. And we had a lot of fun that day, and I've seen you around the, the traps over the years, but yeah. we had a chance to catch up with you. And, you know, Dawes have been so busy, but there's a lot of other things going on with you as well that I want to sort of talk about. Yeah. And I know you're going to play us a song as well, but, but first up, how are you doing? How have you been living with the pandemic? How has that impacted your life this year? Um, obviously, you know, like everybody else, we had a, a lot of plans that just went out the window. We were going to be on tour all year. We were going to be, the first part of the year, we were going to be um, the band for my wife. Uh, she put out a record in March and um, her, uh, her record is called Silver Landings. And we were going to go tour with her, be the Mandy Moore backup band, not play any Dawes songs and try to give like Dawes fans a break from Dawes. Uh, cause we tour all the time and we're always releasing music and we thought maybe it's best for us to just like give everyone a breather. <laughs> and, um, we had another record in the can, but we thought like, well, let's put it out in October, which we're still doing. <clears throat> uh, but it, but it's uh, now at this point now everybody's taking the same break that we were going to. And, um, so, you know, since everything got kind of shut down and canceled, uh, I've had to sort of pivot and figure out other things I know how to do, which it turns out isn't much. <laughs> um, I, I got asked to score a short film, which was cool. And I had to learn by the, like trial by error. I mean, I didn't know what I was doing. I was by myself in my house, but, um, How did that, come uh, that, that came about through actually through my wife, through, um, through, uh, um, one of my good buddies now is the actor, um, Chris Sullivan, who plays Toby on this is us. And he's in this short and the director and him decided they wanted to ask me and and I'd, I'd mentioned to Chris in the past that, that was something I wanted to dabble in and so they gave me a shot and um was it fun? And yeah they're you know it's one of those shorts where they're going to go for funding to make the feature and then hopefully I get to be involved with that yeah. um but yeah that was something that uh was was really fun and then also I've been writing for other people other projects which I've never done and then also like because I have all this time I was able to pretty much write the next album for Dawes which is which isn't the one coming out but the one after that even. So right, it's been right. it's been good. How different is it to to write um music for for a film? I'm presuming it's just score not songs, right? You're actually mm -hmm. just yeah. delivering an instrumental score. Yeah, I mean it's 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 really fun uh, right now, maybe if I keep doing it, I'll stop having, it'll stop being fun in this regard. But it, right now I'm really enjoying how um, it's not my story. Like I love like being this supportive role. And when the director says, no, I need it to be one note, very moody, no, nothing too musical, just a sign, kind of like sound in the background. It's fun to have like that kind of direction because then I get to just be, I get to help him achieve his vision. Right. Um, you know, because I'm I'm used to wanting to represent myself and wanting to tell my story and 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 make sure I feel expressed, and now making sure someone else is feeling expressed, and there's something freeing in that. Um, yeah. And so I, it, it's actually been really enjoyable. Is it something you want to do more of? Totally, especially now that we don't know if touring is ever going to be the same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> especially if you don't know what else you're going to do with your life. Yeah, yeah. Um, you, you know, you, you mentioned, obviously, uh, your wife, Mandy, and um, the TV show This Is Us. You also co-wrote a song, I think, with a mate of mine, Sid Kosler. Yeah. Who's a, a, a composer, film and television composer, who does the score for This Is Us. And you guys got nominated for an Emmy. That's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, so surreal. Yeah. I mean, it was funny, like waking up that day, knowing the Emmy nominations were going to be announced. And I was really just kind of crossing my fingers for Mandy right. uh, in the show. Um, I didn't really think that we stood a chance. Like, not that I don't believe in us and not that I don't. I, Sid gets all the awards and deserves them all because he's incredible what he does. But I, from what I understood, from what other people told me, that specific award of best song would typically go to the... John Oliver's or the Saturday Night Lives, like those kinds of songs, like like songs that are that are, um, I don't know, just more like invented in this kind of spe sketch comedy way, I guess. Okay. But sure enough, um, like there was our name, and I really did not expect it coming at all. I, like I was, 
uh, once Mandy didn't get nominated this year, uh, which she's fine with, obviously. But uh, once that happened, I was like, oh, that's too bad. Anyway, moving on. And then like my phone started blowing up. I was like, what are they right. talking about? <laughs> that's nice, right? Something yeah, really un cool. unexpected, a little gift from the universe. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Um, what have you guys been doing to, you know, stop from going mad? Because obviously you're you're living together and you have been for a while, clearly, because you're married. Yeah. But um, <laughs> normally you're on tour or she's working on set. None of that is going on right now. What have you guys been doing to sort of entertain yourselves? Um, I, we've weirdly, uh, started exercising more than I ever have, which is a funny thing to say, but I've never been, I've always tried to be healthy, but I never really take committed that much to it. And this time, I guess we just decided like, let's try to do this every day. It's not like we have anything else to do. Um, and, uh, we, we, re I rewatched the wire. She'd never seen the wire. So, so that was really fun to watch, but mostly it's just, we've just been enjoying each other's company. I, I, I feel like there's been this, this joke of like, partners getting along and a lot of people wanting to say like oh man like i roll can can we believe that we're we're with each other all the time sure. and for her and i we just don't relate to that i mean my you know I, like i'm i'm not saying it's not hard for people i don't want to diminish that but i just feel so lucky that uh she and i have really cherished this obviously these aren't ideal circumstances under yeah. which to spend six months together i'm i'm it's not like i'm happy about a pandemic it's horrifying but consider all all that uh being considered um i uh we yeah we feel so lucky that we've only had a blast being together you're very fortunate as, as you said and yeah. uh you know i i uh i also live with my partner and we get along really well and uh to be honest with you you know um it's not that different for us because we spend a lot of time together anyway but you know mm -hmm. when you're actually forced into it and you have no choice you know, I mean, you know, it, it, it could go upside down, but yeah, you know, yeah. We, we, we've been lucky. But I, I do feel for people who are alone. Yeah. I, I really do. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and maybe people who didn't realize they didn't like their partner until about three months ago. It's got, it's got to be rough. <laughs> you can't, yeah, I mean, like, you can't move I, out. I have several friends that haven't touched a person in four or five months. I mean, it's right. just bizarre. Yeah. And I think, I mean, yeah, if there's ever been a case for like why it's why why like there's something to be said for like finding somebody it's it's this moment <laughs> yeah find your person um yeah. so so have you been doing anything else different anything uh that you guys wouldn't have expected to do i mean do you go you know do you take deep dives on amazon in the middle of the night have you had anything show up to your house that you wish you hadn't ordered or <laughs> um i mean i i i now like own a lot more sweatpants than I ever have. I'm not, <laughs> I didn't really wear sweatpants before, and now I don't really wear regular pants. Yeah. <laughs> so um, the album that you mentioned uh, is uh, is coming out. It's called Good Luck With Whatever, right? Yeah. Um, did you have that title already before the pandemic? Yeah, weirdly, and now I feel like it has this new dimension to it, and I'm really I'm really happy about that. Right, right, right. Um, tell us about uh, recording it, when, where. We recorded it in Nashville last year, um, like May through July, but it was only actually three weeks of actual recording. Um, we were touring and stuff so that we, 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 we fit it in when we could. And our producer, Dave Cobb, he did like the big Sturgill records and Brandy and uh, Jason Isbell and a lot of other great stuff. He's amazing. And right. um, it, it was a joy working with him. We did it at RCA Studio B, the real big room there in Nashville, uh, which is his spot. And um, a lot of special stuff was made there. Um, Chris Christopherson, Elvis Presley, Dolly Parton recorded Joe Lean and, and I Will Always Love You there. Wow. Um, and uh, yeah, he, he works at like a breakneck speed. So we did it really fast just because he's the kind of producer where we would patch things up and like address whatever notes that he had. And then the first time we got it right, it would be like moving on. And sometimes it was almost too too fast for us. We were like, "Are we sure we like what we're doing?" And and he was like, "No, no I promise, this is the way to do it." And he was right because looking back, we felt like our record now has this sense of urgency and this this sense of like thinking on our feet and and um, this life to it that only comes from from uh, you know getting that first or second take. Uh, yeah. And it was really a whole band effort. The vocals are live. The whole band's live. I mean, there's a couple overdubs just because I can't play two guitars at once. That kind of thing. But but um, but otherwise, it's just a live record. And is that different from you? Is that, is that a different way of working for you guys from the past? We've done some records like that that are just more or less completely live. Um, 
uh, and then other records that are a lot more piecemeal and produced and, and uh, really like using the studio. And that's been fun too. I do find that for myself as a singer, um, when I'm singing with the band, when I'm singing with a guitar, um, I always like the vocal take more. When I, when I look back on those vocal takes that I know that I really spent time with and belabored over and we edited it and comped it, I don't like them. Um, I don't know if a listener would feel that way, but you know, as the guy that's singing it, that's, that's, it always hits me more live when I pay less attention and just, it's a little more thrown off and yeah, sure. A lot of it's out of tune or whatever, but it feels like I sang a song. It doesn't feel like some, uh, lifeless, like perfect, like sure. tapped out thing. Well, the, the listener probably doesn't notice, right? It's really all about, you know, how you hear yourself. Yeah, and I, it's like, I don't, yeah, I wouldn't expect a listener to notice, but I, I do sometimes wonder if a listener feels it, you know, sometimes like when I think about certain examples, like, you know, you think of like Bob Dylan or Grateful Dead, those records are pretty scrappy. And then you think of the Eagles or Steely Dan, and those records are really perfect. Yeah. And I don't know if people think about it, but sometimes when something is a little scrappier, I've, I, I've, I've sort of had this theory in my head that like, when something feels scrappier and live and imperfect, then people receive it as a version of a song, not the definitive one, but this was one performance of it. Right. Whereas when you hear the Steely Dan or Eagles recording, it does feel like, oh, this is intended to be definitive. And I'm and and again, I don't think that's something that people think about, but I do yeah. think it's it's intuited on some level. But right, you know, sometimes those records take two or three years to make as well. And you know, yeah, totally. Uh, and I don't want to spend that much time in a studio. Right, and, and perhaps you know, in the in the seventies and the eighties, there were budgets that are, allowed people yeah. to spend that long making a record. But you know, you've got to be uh, you, you've got to be uh, um, uh, able to sort of move quickly these days. I think within the music business as well, yeah, uh, because of the uh, you know the time in between records is is shorter. And I'm wondering, I know you're going to play a song for us in a minute, but before we we do that. Um, it's an album and obviously you're, you're an album band. Where do you sit with the idea that a lot of people have, uh, you know, started to, you know, make a part of their, their, uh, you know, plans these days in, you know, releasing singles, releasing music as it's made rather than in a collection of 12. Um, yeah, I mean, I dig it, I, but I, but I find that the music that I love, the records that I love, they're so dependent upon the inner relationships between the songs. Like, I feel like, like, you know, the Rolling Stones might be my favorite band. And w with a record like Beggar's Banquet, sure, you could release Sympathy for the Devil or Street Fight Man as singles because they are, they can, they can stand up in that way. Um, but then a song like Dear Doctor, I love Dear Doctor. Um, but if you listen, and I also feel like Dear Doctor makes Sympathy for the Devil and Street Fight Man better. But if you release Dear Doctor by itself, it would just feel like, wait, what is this? Where, what's, the, what's the context here? But right. within the album, it makes all the songs stronger because there's this, there's this flow to it. And, um, and I, I still have to look at the music that I love that way. You know, If I tried to write 10 singles, they would sound a certain way and they might not necessarily live together very nicely and and sometimes yeah i think like how strong a song is 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 also processed by how you frame it and when it's the last song on a record or the the middle song on the record like i do think that informs our experience for the people that are listening in those ways and i understand that a lot of people aren't they're on spotify and they want to hear the song they want to hear and they don't want to listen to a whole record but i feel really lucky that i'm able to say that dawes fans aren't seemingly like that like we we when we release records we then go on tour and we play the the deepest tracks on any album that we want and it's always embraced and it's and people are always aware of it obviously we don't play staples center but i feel like the people that do buy in on what we're doing are those kinds of fans so i, I de it's definitely a luxury but uh it's something that we're so proud of and so grateful for that we're always probably going to want to be a uh, a record band but you know we'll release singles like we're releasing a, a handful of singles before this album comes out two of them are already out right um so we 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 like put like teasing stuff out there and helping grow the experience but but we're always going to be an album man do you want to play one of those songs for us now i know you got a guitar kicking around over there oh yeah what are, what are you going to play for Talking to 
Is it the man that was here before me? The one that wrapped your heart and walked. If it is, then I'll let you talk. It's clear that something you're still working through. But who, who do you think you're talking to? Where, where do you think you are right now? Is there a reason you're still digging up the past? Because you haven't touched your drink And you haven't stopped to think If that holds you back from anyone that cares for you Well, who, who do you think you're talking to? What do you want me to say to this? Frankly, I think we would be remiss If we don't remind ourselves To share the painful memories too So baby, tell me who Do you need to be alone? Can you find your own right home? And is that still a house that you can't bear to leave? Does this coat hang in the hall? Are his pictures on the wall? And is there one of us you're trying to deceive? Oh, babe, the trains have all stopped running soon. And I don't know how long it's been since you walked away. And after all I said so far, the tender of this bar says the only people left here man are me and you so buddy who who do you think you're talking to what do you want me to say to this frankly i think we would be remiss if we don't mind ourselves to share the painful memories too so baby tell me who who do you think you're talking to oh, who do you think you're talking to who do you think you're talking to who do you think you're talking to? Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. <laughs> thank you. Um, the song is called Who Do You Think You're Talking To? And obviously it's going to be on the album, which is coming in October now, right? You have a yeah, October today? 2nd. Okay. Um, uh, in an earlier part of this conversation, you talked about writing with some other people as well. Um, how's that been? I mean, can you share who you've been writing with or is that sort of... It's, um, it's been like, actually like friends of mine that are more in like the pop world um, and they write to then send out to like A&R people and managers and so it's not really with one artist in mind and they have a lot of success with it, they have a lot of success and, and um, one of these guys is a, is a really good friend of mine now and he's he's invited me into the world and he's been really gracious and really patient with me because it's very foreign to me um and 
so I yeah, it's it's been it's been sort of like I uh, me 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 scrambling to learn and and then I and then I also have written with artists that um uh that I do feel like probably closer to in terms of styles and stuff artists like Molly Tuttle or the band Joseph. Um, I don't know if they'll use the songs we wrote, but um, but it, that was really fun. But I have found that like writing the the pop stuff has sort of felt like almost like puzzle making where. Um, you know, I think as a songwriter, you get maybe nervous, like, well, I don't want to, I don't want to deplete my resources for like what I do with Dawes. Um, but when I'm doing this pop stuff, it feels, yeah, it feels more like just like architecture. Like I know a structure and I know how to do this and I, and I wouldn't, this song wouldn't work with Dawes. So there's really no, I'm not, I'm not losing any um, of what I would want to hold on to by any means. Um, so yeah, so it's actually been, um, it's it's been a, a surprisingly fun and satisfying, and also not infringing on um, what I needed to not infringe on, which is because, it, because it's a different style of writing, isn't it? Yeah. I, I I interviewed um, Ryan Tedder years ago, back when we were doing Guitar Center sessions. Mm -hmm. um, he, his band One Republic came on, and I remember him talking to me about writing. I mean, this is a guy with so many hits credits it's ridiculous yeah and, and i remember him talking to me about when he first came to la and he was working in the dreamworks mailroom that he set out to as he put it crack the code of how those songs are written and, and is that what you're talking about when you're talking about architecture how these things fit together yeah like you want to be you want to be mindful of tone you want to be mindful of like you know like it's really sometimes it's this it's it's shifting a word that makes something feel like a heartbreaking song to something that you could see 5,000 people wanting to put their fist in the air to right. um it's it it can be that subtle and um and yeah recognizing like the universal experience and also just like understanding like um what progressions and what what jumps in melody that like that are that are popularly responded to and i'm i am probably the last guy that anybody should listen to on like what those secrets are but but um and i don't even know if they're secrets i think we i think people are constantly surprised i don't think hosier's take me to church was like following any rule book it just happened to take the world by storm and a lot of songs are like that but right. i do think that um you know understanding like it would be great if we get to the chorus by 45 seconds and it would be great if the song is three minutes and it yeah. would be great if we had a four on the floor kick drum beat sure. certain things that are like that are pretty safe uh bets so so you can't tour right now obviously and um uh uh you have an album to promote um are you planning on anything any special event or maybe some kind of streaming concert when you put the album out something that you can give to the fans it's funny you mentioned that because we like just announced it. We're going to do something on, um, let me make sure I got the date right. Um, it is, the date is going to be uh, August 28th. Um, the, and it's that people can t the, watch the live show. Um, so yeah, we're, we're, um, we're really excited. We better make sure we get this out before August 28th then so we can, we can tell people about it. Yeah. Uh, I think it's going to be out next Friday. So uh, whenever you're watching this, August 28th, uh, what is it going to be? Is it going to be something on your website? How how are people going to be able to access it? Um, it'll yeah, I think it'll be um, like there's like uh, on our Instagram right now. There's like it was just announced, and there's like yeah, the there's a uh, people can find the the link and and buy tickets and and be there for the gig. Cool. So uh, next year, are you trying to plan either uh, a Mandy Moore tour or uh, a Doors tour in uh, 20? Yeah, we want to do both. I mean, I, I hope, I mean, like, you hear such crazy things about the vaccine. Like people think like, oh, well, don't get, don't get your hopes up. Just because there's going to be a vaccine doesn't mean we're just going to, it's going to disappear. Sure. Uh, so I don't know what, when, what's going to be safe, but uh, that's the plan. We definitely can't wait to get back on tour whatever that's going to mean in the future because that's that's what we love it's who we are and yeah. definitely with mandy too and it, it's obviously been such a big part of your life i mean you you've had the opportunity to really sort of connect with your wife obviously in the last five months but are you are you missing the road are you missing oh, desperately and yeah. it's we joke about it in like group texts and stuff where i'll, I'll we'll say like you know, we miss the worst parts of touring. Like I miss, I miss waking up at the Canadian border at like three thirty in the morning, 
and all of us like having to like like bleary eyed walk off the bus and give our passport to someone. Right. I miss I miss being you know I miss like people waking me up by talking too loud in the front lounge. I miss everything about it. Yeah. Um, and obviously the most of all, I miss the shows. I miss turning up an amp really loud and I miss singing songs with my with my best pals. Of course. So I I can't wait for that to come back. So you're gonna wrap up with another song you're gonna play for us? Sure. What are you gonna finish with? Um, this one's St. Augustine at Night. Okay. we smoked the seven up would balance out the beer mom would make us dinner and we'd all try not to choke dad was working later every year we count the trucks on highway one on their way to Jacksonville Wondering where they headed on from there My brothers and my sister all stood spiritually still As if those roads became the answer to their prayers But I didn't want it any other way this town was the one thing that felt right. All these tourists could be kings during the day, but not in St. Augustine at night. I started working at the bait shack, supplying all the fishing tours. Pretty soon I was chartering a boat. My dad said I needed dumb luck and a secret stash, of course. If I stood a chance at keeping things afloat. That's when my girlfriend told me, hey, there's a baby on the way. And I need to know you're gonna go to bed. Well, I never put up till tomorrow the things I should have done today. No, I've always waited way longer than that. I have never had much say in how I felt. I've been guided by my barroom appetites. So if this world belongs to everybody else, just leave me St. Augustine at night. Lord must really love us common folk Cause he made so goddamn much Now if he just point the way to go If he could just start speaking up Our oldest brother left this world for leading one too many lives I guess he settled for none at all The rest of us just grew apart and blamed our husbands and our wives When anyone was asked why we don't call Life became a series of birthdays, cars, and pets just anything to look forward to. 
I don't talk about mistakes. I don't talk about regrets. At this point, I'm not sure what good it would do. And I'm not asking for anybody's help. As I gaze out where the stars dance with the lights. If I'm not sure how I feel about myself, I still got St. Augustine at night. Oh, I still got St. Augustine at night. That was great, thank you. That one just came out, right? About four or yeah. five days ago, St. Augustine at night. Listen, man, it's been great catching up with you. Thank you for doing this. Uh, yeah. Uh, I know that you've got, uh, from the last time I spoke to you, you've got like two dogs and three cats over there or the other yeah, way Yeah, tons of animals. Uh, but the dog that was barking about 10 minutes ago was mine, just so nice. it Yeah, okay. So, um, <laughs> hey, I hope I see you somewhere in the flesh real soon. Yeah, me too. And, uh, you know, Good luck with the album release, and uh, yeah. thanks for hanging out with us. Yeah, man, good to see you. Cheers, mate. I'll see you later.